You know what, Dad? I know lots of stuff, Scruff, to be honest. But I have a horrible feeling that you're going to tell me something that I really don't want to know. Well, I was talking to Granny Whiskers the other day. Oh, yes. And she told me a few things about you that I didn't know. What? What was that, then? What about how well-behaved I was when I was growing up as a boy? And how I never, ever got into trouble? Or how I was always kind and, and polite? Oh, yes, I do remember all that, Scruff. I have to say, I do remember. You don't need to remind me. Dad, stop telling fibs. You, a Methodist minister as well. I'm going to tell Uncle Paul Martin that you tell fibs. That'll get you into trouble. That's not nice, Scruff. That's not very nice at all. Anyway, Paul was talking about you the other day in, in one of his sermons. Your fame, Scruff, is spreading far and wide. Anyway, I was good when I was a boy. I was kind and I was polite and well behaved and always, always did as I was told. That's the thing, Dad. You didn't. Didn't what? Didn't do as you were told. It's not true. You were quite naughty, I think. Then you go telling my big brother Elliot to behave himself. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk. You need to set a better example. Oh, Scruff, that's not nice at all. Anyway, if the cap fits, then you are wearing it. You're no picture of perfection. Oh, yes. You know what, Dad? John Wesley might have thought some people could be perfect in their lifetime. Shame you're not one of them. <laughs> OK, OK. Let's just calm down now, shall we? Now then, tell me, what did Granny Whiskers tell you about me? You never tidied up your bedroom. What? Get your ears syringed, Dad. You never tidied up your bedroom. That's what I heard. Stuff everywhere. Books, paper, pens, <laughs> records, clothes. Loads of clothes. Especially underpants. Scruff, scruff, stop it. Stop it, you're embarrassing me. I wasn't that bad at all. I tidied up once every couple of months. That's OK, isn't it? That's not so bad, really. A pigsty. That's what it was. <laughs> nice now that my mum can keep you in order. Scruff, scruff. Maybe, well, maybe I wasn't always the tidiest person. But you should see me now. This study is so tidy. Everything in its right place. Everything perfectly arranged. Look, there's even Garfield there. Look, sitting on top of the printer. Say hello to Garfield. Yes, he's sitting on top of the printer there. Tidying up is my new passion. It really is. Clearing things out. Getting rid of all of the rubbish. Starting over again. Hey, that reminds me. No, Dad, please, no. Don't do it. Why do you turn everything into a sermon? <laughs> because that's what I do, Scruff. That is what I do. And it's your fault. You started it, Scruff. You got me thinking about tidying up and sorting things out and, and clearing out things that are of, of no use anymore. But it reminds me that we're in this season of Advent, aren't we? Exciting, isn't it? Looking forward, getting ready, making plans, tidying up, making space for the Christmas tree and the tinsel and all the decorations. Only a few more sleeps now until Christmas Day. In your case, just a few more snores. Oh, cheeky. I never snore. You're thinking of yourself now, Scruff. But listen, it is true, isn't it, that we, we have to sort things out in this period leading up to Christmas. 
We have to sort out the decorations, get the decorations out of the loft, get ready, and sometimes let go of things to make room for all the Christmas stuff. Maybe sometimes we have to actually get rid of some of the old decorations and the tinsel to make room for something new. But it is time to get ready, isn't it? It really is to sort everything out around the house, but also, also to sort ourselves out as well. To sort out our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, sort out our attitudes, our hopes, our dreams. And in all the busyness, in all the busyness, Scruff, to make a bit more room. Who for? For Jesus, of course. Make some space, make some room for Jesus. To allow Jesus into our lives again. I do love Christmas, I really do. The presents and the cards and, and the Christmas pudding and the fruit cake. Yes, I love fruit cake scruff, I really do. Especially if Mom feeds it with that old bottle of brandy in the cupboard. It tastes really nice and lovely. But Christmas is also about letting go, about making room, about tidying up our lives, about thinking what really, really matters and beginning over again. Knowing that we are loved, Scruff, knowing that we are deeply loved by God who never leaves us, who never lets us go. In fact, God came to us in the form of a baby over 2,000 years ago. I bet that was untidy. I bet that was messy and smelly. <laughs> that place where Jesus was born with all those cows and sheep and straw and everything. Maybe, maybe that's true. But out of all that mess 2,000 years ago, out of all that mess came something, came someone amazing and worthy of our worship. Dad? Yes, Scruff? I quite like your little sermons, really. Oh, thank you. But I love you more. Oh, thank you, Scruff. That's so nice. That really is so nice. I love you too. Even if you do snore and keep me awake at night. Don't look like that. It's true, you do. Anyway. Anyway, Scruff. What time does Mum get home? About half an hour. Right. Half an hour. OK. Let's go. Let's go and tidy up that kitchen again. Quick. Before she sees the mess. Quick as you can. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll wash up. You grab the broom and you start sweeping the floor, yeah? Come on, come on, let's go and get tidying. Let's go, come on, come on.